welcome to worship. Today we will hear the story from a book of Judges about Deborah, a 13th century BCE Israelite judge and prophet. And we will hear one of Jesus' stories about the risks we should take as his followers. From the corners of the world, from the confusion of life, from the loneliness of our hearts, gather us, O God, to feed our minds, to fire our imagination, to free our hearts. Gather us, O God. Let us pray. O God, we gather in your presence with expectation, longing for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us this morning fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. And yet, God, we have to confess that we have not always listened and acted as your children should. We have squandered your gifts and used them as if they had been given for us alone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbours and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us hear the good news. Even though we have not been faithful in all things, our God still welcomes us with patience and kindness. Therefore, as people of God's promise, let us receive forgiveness, embrace hope and faithfully respond through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to God, we are forgiven, we have hope. Generous God, in abundance you give us things both spiritual and physical. Help us to hold lightly the fading things of this earth and grasp tightly the lasting things of your sovereignty, so that what we are and do and say may be our gifts to you through Christ, who beckons all to seek the things of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. And now we pray aloud in the words Jesus taught his disciples while on earth, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Caesar, the commander of his army, was based in Harasheth, Hagoyim. Because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a, a prophet, the wife of Lapidus, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel, in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you ten thousand men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Caesar, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, the honour will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Caesarea into the hands of a woman. 
So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. Okay. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest what I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever, for whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You have to take risks. We will only understand the miracle of life fully when we allow the unexpected to happen. So says the author Paulo Coelho. Our Bible readings today are both about risk-taking and the consequences of the kind of fear that stops us from moving out of our comfort zones, stopped us taking a chance on doing something new, following a hunch. The story Jesus tells about the three servants appears in both the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. The writer of the Gospel of Luke places a story after the tale of Zacchaeus, the man who risked all to get to know Jesus better. The writer of the Gospel of Matthew has the story placed in amongst Jesus' imaginings of the coming of the end times and what happens between the now he and his listeners are in and that end time, which he, Jesus, like many devout Jewish people of the time, assumed was going to happen pretty soon. In the original written version of this story, the money the servants got was worth a small fortune. The monetary value of a talent, the currency of first century Palestine, was the equivalent of 15 years worth of labourers pay, about £150,000 in today's money, maybe. So the five talent servant was receiving wheelbarrows and wheelbarrows of coins. Even one talent man would have been quite a heap which he would very sensibly decided to bury. Standard practice for keeping things safe in first century Palestine. So in his story, Jesus gives the servants ridiculous amounts of money. The benevolence of the master is obviously something to note. A wealthy man willing to take a chance on his servants, giving them as much responsibility as he thought they could cope with, then stepping aside to see what would happen. 
Jesus suggesting that this is a picture of God's dealing with humans, the benevolence, the understanding of folks' different personalities, the hands-off approach that allows folk to grow and discover themselves and the world around them, the parental checking up to make sure everything is okay. Not much news as far as the story is concerned that the servants one and two grew in their lives, took risks with the money, offered what they had achieved back to their master with joy and knew the master's smile upon them. They have not frittered away their time, have not, like the foolish bridesmaids, let their lamps grow dim and so they are now invited to God's great banquet, God's meal for the end of time. But the third servant, a different kind of closure for him, he hadn't understood the nature of the master's offer, hadn't believed that the master had his, the servant's, good at heart. Mistrust led to fear, a small life, with no thought of taking risks, no looking beyond the boundaries that he'd created for himself. Like the fundamentalists, the rule keepers of all religions, this servant missed the joy, the hope, the challenge of what was on offer and settled for a kind of security that benefited no one. The master returns. The servant refuses to see what could have been and is condemned to live in the smallness of his life forever. Take the risks. Live life to the full while you can. Follow my ways, says Jesus, before it's too late. You're in the in-between times. God's message, God's gospel has been given again and the end of all this will be coming. So live extravagantly with love and joy and hope. The reading from the book of Judges is also about risk taking. A woman who takes a risk and a man who won't. Interesting to note that one of the judges of Israel at the time of this story, around the second half of the 13th century BCE, 3,320 years ago, was a woman. Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a judge and a prophet. Definitely someone to consult when you wanted a bit of God's wisdom. However, the non-hero of today's story, Barak, didn't want to consult Deborah. And when Deborah sends him a message that God is commanding him, Barak, to take 10,000 men and go and lead the army of Israelites against their oppressors of 20 years, the Canaanites, Barak is definitely not interested. He is risk averse. This is too big a risk. The Canaanites, led by Sisera, have 900 iron chariots, which was very scary. So Barak says he will only go if Deborah goes. He's not taking all the responsibility for this. Deborah agrees to go, but tells Barak his lack of faith in her words, his reluctance to take the risk that she might be right to trust in God's message, means that he will not get the credit for the victory. It will be a woman who defeats the Canaanite commander, Sisera. And indeed it was. Sisera ran from the battle his troops were losing and hid in a tent away from the battlefield, was recognised by the tent's owner, Jael, and was, in a very unsporting manner, killed by jail while he slept. God's followers have often been risk takers, often been those who were prepared to act against the status quo, those who stood up for God's righteousness, for God's oppressed people. Throughout the Old Testament, God's chosen were those who weren't afraid to speak out God's message, even in the face of indifference or hostility. Think Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Esther, Amos, Micah. Jesus, another of God's risk takers, walked in first century Palestine, teaching God's good news, encouraging his followers to take all the risks necessary to live life to the full in God's love and hope and joy. Seize the day. Go that extra mile. Move out of your comfort zone. Lose your life so you can find it again. As we consider what's happening in our world today, as we watch helplessly while innocents get slaughtered and our greed destroys the planet, it's our boldness in loving and offering hope that can make the difference. Taking the risk to speak out God's message of peace and joy being for everyone, living our lives being known for acting justly, loving mercy and walking humbly with our God will offer hope. Here's a poem about hope written by Elizabeth Flett. It's called, Hope is Not Made of Denial. My hope is a flower half wilted, an apple beginning to turn, the last dregs of a sunset. It is not made of denial. 
it's barely made of anything these days. Something to be snatched or glimpsed rather than nurtured or cherished. My hope is buried in the embers of a fire I lit far too long ago for the flames to be still visible. Half bruised, half broken, half forgotten and unspoken and yet, and yet, in the half smile of a stranger, in the door held open, in the hand outstretched, my small hope manages to grow small roots, resisting against the dark, one day at a time. Let us pray. Holy One, who has given us the breath of life, today we remember to breathe deeply, to rest, to take in, to pause before we act. And then to take in another deep breath, poised on the edge, and risk jumping in, risk taking action, risk speaking up, risk using the gifts we have been given, so that the, at the end of our life, we can see with absolute clarity that no part of our existence was wasted in fear of failure or fear of success. Hold us, help us to become your people, full of love and light. Amen. We believe in God who created all things 
and seeks for all to be in communion as God's people. We believe in Jesus Christ, who showed us how to share love and who commissioned us to go out into the highways and byways, inviting all to be part of God's work in the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who leads and guides us into the world, then touches the lives of those around us in ways that make them receptive to love. We believe in the harvest and the call for labourers to receive and respond, sharing light and life with the world. So believing, let us bring before God our prayers for ourselves and for the world around us. Let us pray. God, we pray that we may be found ready whenever you speak to us. May we heed your call and do your will. Guide your church that it may show forth your light and love through Christ our Lord. Caring God, bless the mission of the church as it seeks to build your kingdom on earth. May we be seen as children of the day and not of the night. Creator of the world, save us and help us. Righteous God, we remember before you all those who exercise their gifts in government, in commerce, in the building up of society. We pray that they would exercise their power wisely for the benefit of the poor, the oppressed and the troubled. We remember all who are frustrated in their work or in their lives. And we pray for those whose world is collapsing around them. Creator of the world, save us and help us. Creating loving God, we rejoice in the gifts you have given to us. May we share them and use them aright. Creator of the world, save us and help us. Victorious God, we rejoice in the saints of God, those who have triumphed over death and we pray for friends and loved ones departed. Creator of the world, save us and help us. God, our untiring creator, who gave hours of darkness for our rest and times of winter for silent growth, we give you thanks for the creativity of relaxation and for the hours that refresh us. We ask you to encourage us through these hard times when all we see is war and destruction around us. By the power of your spirit, help us to see growing places. Help us to see your love at work in the world so that we move into a space where we may flourish with renewed understanding of your deep desire and love. We pray today for people caught up in war, for those living in Sudan, in Eritrea, in Yemen, in Ukraine, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Gaza and the occupied territories. We pray a prayer written by the organisation Tear Fund. Dear God, we cry out to you on behalf of the people seriously affected by conflicts around the world, and particularly the conflict in Gaza and Israel. Our hearts break at the devastation and suffering that we see, and we know it breaks yours too. We ask that you would stretch out your mighty hand to bring an end to this war. We cry out for people who have been injured or traumatised, who have lost loved ones and their homes. Please provide everything they need and be their comfort, their hope, their healer and their safe refuge. We pray for your peace to reign. We look to you as our saviour and the hope of the world. For the sake of your Son, in whose name we pray, our saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As always, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we know God's peace with us the peace of the God who is and who was and who is to come. And now a blessing. We are not alone. Let us live in our world, surrounded by God's love, 
supported by God's people and strengthened by the knowledge that God will be with us. And may the love of the Creator, the Son and the Spirit sustain us today and always. Amen.